What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper Golf Channel coming to you with another edition of Lindy's Best 9 Bets. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell as we get going. Goes a long way for me on this video. Goes a long way for you. You become a prize whenever great betting content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. Quick little recap, talking the players. Anytime Scotty Scheffler, anytime a big, big favorite ends up winning, I'm probably going to be in a lot of trouble. That's generally how it works. Uh, if you checked out the Best 9 Bets from last week, had a decent chance for for some some Martin Layard action, Gary Woodland, whenever Roy McIlroy won him out of default because John Rahm withdrew in the first round, so that was nice. And then Tyrrell Hatton finished second. He ended up buoying the entire card, the half unit there, at nearly plus 400 with that unbelievable back nine that he put together. Nice little 29. That's useful there at TPC Sawgrass. But we're now heading to the Valspar. We're heading to the Copperhead course here. Uh, in Innisbrook, going to be a wild, wild week. Really long rough, really narrow fairways, really hard golf course. We're going to see some low scores. Uh, with that in mind, I'm looking at some players that I think might be relying on a little bit of ball striking, have some decent course history. Because again, if you've played here, probably a plus because it's just, it's tough sledding. But if you're not playing well, you're probably going to be dead as it is. But I've got my nine best bets. We're going to be doing things a little bit differently this week because I don't have a make miss cut section. Feels as though this week, pretty efficient numbers. People understand that there's another high variance Florida golf course where you have trouble lurking everywhere. So uh, going to be avoiding that one. I think the markets are just a little bit too tight to try to beat this week. So I've got three matchups that I really like. I've got six plays then for the outright section. We're going to do two top 20s and four to win plays. We're looking for that winner. Still looking for the first winner here uh, since we started up Lindy's Best Night Bets three weeks ago. So very much looking forward to it why don't we just get to the pick shall we we get our cards started off with will gordon against bo hostler and somebody needs to explain this to me somebody I, I feel like i'm taking crazy pills here but i'm looking over at bet rivers which i don't have access to but this is the best line available for it i'm looking over at dk it's going to be something pretty similar still waiting on a couple of books to be able to throw out their props so we're going to be waiting in flux for it but this is the best line available for it right now and we have will gordon as a dog to Bo Hostler. To me, that's a little surprising considering Will Gordon plus 7,000 over on DK and yet Bo Hostler plus 9,000 on DK. Just the market valuation of where they stand tells me that this is a decent enough bet. But then you even break it down further and you look at some of the ball striking numbers here for Will Gordon of late. It hasn't been beautiful by any means, but when you have very difficult fields like the Players' Championship, the Arnold Palmer, the Honda Classic, yeah, that was a weak field, but that's three straight made cuts for Will Gordon. And even though we saw Bo Hostler play very, very nicely at the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am, T11 there, T14 at Phoenix, I find to be far more impressive He's now on the heels of three straight missed cuts without breaking 72 in a single one of those six rounds. That tells me Will Gordon playing better in form. He has the better skill set also, I believe, for this golf course. It's long. There's water lurking in some spots. Mainly this rough is kind of what I see being an issue. And Bo Hossler continues to be losing shots off the tee. And that's problematic because generally he's a really good putter and he's gaining shots off the tee. If he loses that element to his golf game, Will Gordon just exponentially better. Very weak putter, very weak short game. But I think strokes gain off the tee 20th, that is a huge, huge weapon when you're looking at a head-to-head -head on one golfer coming off of three missed cuts and one golfer coming off three made cuts. He's got better odds in the outright market. I think that's understandable. So Will Gordon to be Bo Hostler, pretty easy bet if you ask me. Half unit on everything going in the matchup columns. The next matchup I'm targeting is Gary Woodland versus Tommy Fleetwood. And Fleetwood, really nice performance at the players' top 30 there. We saw a 65 that buoyed him quite a bit on Saturday. Ended up backing that up with the 76. But Gary Woodland, he's just somebody that is a former winner at this golf course. And when it gets long and you get these stinger two irons that Gary Woodland's able to go out and hit on golf courses repeatedly. I mean, think of a, a Pebble Beach type where they had the really long rough, played a little bit longer than it normally would for the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am. He won the U.S. Open out there. Yes, the U.S. Open. And this is kind of a U.S. Open type style golf course. You see low winning scores. You see it very difficult off the tee. And I think that's just a weapon to have here with Gary Woodland and with the decent enough 
uh, experience that he has here. We saw the ninth at the Genesis. It's not like the form has completely abandoned him. He still has that ball striking off the tee. It just repeatedly shows up. He's actually been positive in every single tournament he's played off the tee by at least a shot since September of last year. The Fortinet Championship. This is not the Fortinet. Just throwing it out there. Gary Woodland also going up against Tommy Fleetwood. I think Fleetwood... He's been a lot better of late, no doubt about it. Second in strokes gain approach here at this golf course. But that off the, tee, off the tee game is a tiny bit suspect for me. He's now lost in three of four. One of those resulted in a missed cut at the Phoenix Open. And this field is way softer than what we've seen in previous weeks. But I think that makes me pretty excited to just see Gary Woodland at even money. Yes, if you were not even money, if it were even minus 106, minus 108, I would probably just be shying away from this. But I'm getting a 50-50 head-up matchup on Gary Woodland on a golf course that I think suits him very nicely. Former winner. There's a reason for that. Gary Woodland straight up against Tommy Flute. And our last one. Why don't we just go to the guy who's won the last two events here at Innisbrook here at the Copperhead course. The Snake Pit. He's figured it out. He's done very, very nicely here. And that is my dude, Sam Burns. Oh, boy. If you guys don't know yet, I am a big, huge Sam Burns truther. Part of it is that he just plays a little bit over his head from time to time where he can gain so many shots off the tee and with the putter, and it seems for some reason to just show up at the Valspar. One last year, gaining 5.2 with the putter, seven with the approach, and lost a shot actually off the tee. And generally, that's a part of his game that's a little bit stronger. He also won this tournament in 2021, backed it up at the Byron Nelson there as well. And the only person who's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Scotty Scheffler in contention and has found a way to beat him in the last year is Sam Burns at the Colonial. So I'm just throwing it out there. You want to talk about when a golf course suits somebody and they just, you're, you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the guy who just won the players and has ascended to number one in the world and is the no doubt de facto champion of the world at the moment. I'm going to be backing him in this simple head-to-head -head market against Jordan Spieth, I'm not going to call him my arch nemesis by any means, but did you watch the drive that bounced off the human kneecap and bounced back into the fairway on number nine? He then makes eagle. He makes a cut he never should have made. I'm just saying, Jordan Spieth got very, very lucky to be playing on the weekend. Played nicely over that Saturday, Sunday. Rode that momentum. Good for him. Pat on the back. Good job for you. But you're going up against my boy Sam Burns on basically the best golf course on planet Earth for him. And Sam Burns, uh, also, if he can get that driver back intact for what it is, he's going to be avoiding this long rough. You know who's not? Jordan Spieth. Jordan Spieth hitting it right into four and a half inch rough here at Innisbrook is going to be problematic. I don't see a whole lot of good things in his future. Now, is he the class of the field? I'm going to no doubt say yes. Him, Justin Thomas, there's a reason that they're up there in the outright markets. I'm not denying that. But again, I'm getting Sam Burns back-to-back -back winner here. Better golf course suited for him. Everything just stands out for me to take my guy against my nemesis, Sam Burns over Jordan Spieth, our last head down. If you're in the states of Colorado, New Jersey, Virginia, or Ohio, congratulations. You live in cool states, that's for sure. But you also have access to this Bet365 promotion that we have going right now. Bet $1 in the video description box below. Simply click on that link to Bet365. It takes you to a lovely, wonderful place where you can bet $1 and get $365 in bonus bets right now. Here's how you do it. You deposit $10, you bet a dollar on anything, and as soon as that bet goes live, you're going to get $365. Yes, three, six, five in bonus bets. That can be used for everything. I, I don't know if you're aware. There's not just golf going on this week. There's that little NCAA tournament thing going on. I might want to put a little coin on that, just throwing it out there. So check out all of the great go golf content that we have going here. Going to be an awesome week, I think, at the Bells Bar. We're going to have a lot of other things coming up here. We've got the match play coming up soon. Of course, the Masters in April, so looking forward to that. But Take advantage of these things now so you can use it on the golf bets going forward. We're going to get you some outright winners come up, coming up here soon. But take advantage of all this great content that we have going here at Odd Shopper by signing up at Bet365, checking out all the college basketball stuff with Ben Raza, Matt Kajewski. Going to be an awesome, awesome week for everybody involved. So take advantage of that. And if you're uh, 21 and over, that's who has access to this. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. All righty, six more to go. Let's get back to the bet. 
we head to hole number four, and I should have just started with that, refer to the video description box below here. Again, it's the whole cool part about this video is doing the scorecard for everybody, but number four is gonna kick off the outright market, and I'm looking at Akshay Bhatia to top 20 for us. Now, a lot of you might not know who Akshay Bhatia is, He's this awesome little lefty from, uh, well, not originally from California, but he works with a golf coach, George Gank Gankis, very famous on the old Instagram channels, uh, that's for sure. But Akshay Bhatia has been an emerging star for a long time. Nice to see him get close. Almost cashed my outright ticket for the Puerto Rico Open. Got second. He got edged out by Echeverria. <laughs> see what I did there? That wasn't very funny, but... It, what, it's not funny how talented he is. And some of you might remember the Honda Classic when he took off his shirt, hit a ball out of the water. It was pretty funny. He's very slender. He could probably, you know, set the gym a little bit. You know, let's bulk it up a little bit. Protein, weight, it doesn't matter. None of this matters. What matters is that we're getting a pretty hefty number on him in the top 20 market at plus 450. That is the best number I've found. If you find this north of plus 350, I'm all right with that too. But he is the only person I'm considering for the outright market as well that's beyond 90, 100 to 1 because 125 to 1 is available at some spots right now. He's got enough talent where I just think he's going to put it together one of these weeks and he's going to lock up his card for the foreseeable future. He's got that kind of game. Now, as you break down some of his profiles, I mean, he's just... He's going to be streaky. You're going to run into some missed cuts. You're going to run into some issues. But if you play out this golf tournament with this field four times, I find it very difficult to believe that he's not finishing in the top 20, one and a half of them. And I know that seems like a weird arbitrary number to throw out there. But again, all we're looking for at plus 450 is for him to finish one, one time out of every four times you were to run this golf tournament out and simulate it you're going to see him in that top 20. And I think he's got that kind of talent. I think he's got much more talent than everybody else around him in the betting odds. I know it feels like a little bit of an uncomfortable plan to add to your betting card, but I'm not looking for the win right from the get-go. Part of me wants to do it, though. Again, I haven't pulled the trigger on it yet. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to be marinating over these odds all week long, that's for sure. But the top 20 market, foregone conclusion. Give me plus 450 on emerging star Akshay Bhatia. For hole number five, I'm going back to Will Gordon. I talked about him in the head-to-head -head marketplace, so give you a little bit of a preview of what I'm looking at, but he's a guy who's kind of had his card, lost his card, had his card, lost his card. That's a majority of the PGA Tour. I know we are inclined to think about our stars a lot. They're about to make bank every single time with these no-cut events, which I'm not a fan of, but that's a story for another day. Will Gordon, though, I'm also looking at in the top 20 market, a lot shorter odds than that of Batia, but at plus 280, this is a guy who's just been consistent of late. Three straight made cuts. Coming off of the Corn Ferry Tour from last year, hit the ground running, did have a third over the course of the fall season uh, in another weaker type field. So he definitely has that kind of game. He had a couple of those missed cuts, the American Express, the Farmers, things of that nature. And the off the tee game hasn't been as good as what you would want it to be, especially going here. But my Lord, the approach game. The approach game can just get hot in a way where even if you're punching out, even if you're having issues at this golf course, you just got to find a way to put the number on the card. And even though around the green, he hasn't been that solid, three of the last four weeks, he's been positive with the putter. I think when you get in a weaker field like this, I'm looking for talent. I'm looking for guys who can hit the ball and can get by. And generally, he's been a very good off the tee player, even though it hasn't been as good for him, even though he still made those three straight cuts. So I think a top 20 isn't as big of a stretch as what the odds might show you. So plus 280, nearly 3-1 to one I'm getting on Will Gordon. Gonna have to take that here for sure. Rounds out my top 20 plays. We're going to the outright market next, and I have four straight plays to win for you. Yes, I'm putting together a traditional betting card for you this week. Because it's my video, I can do whatever the heck I want to do. How's that sound? So yeah, all four of these plays... You can't parlay them together because not four people that are going to win this golf tournament. But I have four individual plays and I'm betting in the outright market, starting with K.H. Lee. There are numbers that exist nearly 66 to 1, 55 to 1 on DK. I would like to find a little bit better than that for sure. But part of K.H. Lee is that he has that same ability that Sam Burns has where he can go up to the class of the field and just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. We've seen a fifth at the BMW during the playoffs last year, a third at the CJ Cup during the fall swing last year, a seventh to start off the Century Tournament of Champions, even though that's a very small field, still put up a really nice showing there. 
and he just gets it done a little bit differently. And this is kind of where I'm looking at to get a little bit diversified with my betting card, different skill sets, not generally what I'm trying to do. I'm looking for similar skill sets most of the time, but I don't have a good gauge of how this one inch longer rough is going to affect scoring at Innisbrook. And a lot of people are going to act like they know. A lot of people are going to say they know. I want to embrace some of that uncertainty and get you exposure to different types of players that I believe have that outright characteristic to go out and win you a golf tournament. KH Lee does it differently than some of the players that I'm going to be targeting otherwise because around the green is where he really shines. He's been positive around the green in terms of strokes gained in every single tournament except for one, which is a miscut at the American Express. That's generally what's going to happen when he's not going around the green since August. Yes, since August of last year, that is nearly 11 tournaments where we have strokes gain data where he has been positive around the green. I think there might be a scrambler's mentality to something you want to do. I'm going to have exposure in DFS to those type of builds. I'm also going to have bomber builds. I'm not positive about how important the, the accuracy is going to be off the tee. I got to imagine with four and a half inch Bermuda rough, going to matter a little bit. So I think he's the kind of scrambler that can really find something with the irons on random weeks. And when he does, it gets beautiful. Of course, the big question mark, is the putter broken? He's now lost strokes in three straight tournaments, resulted in two missed cuts at both the genesis of the players with a 53rd, very non show at the Arnold Palmer. So KH Lee, I think it's a long enough number into the 60s where I'm willing to take a shot on it Talent alone, K.H. Lee, give me that to start off the two-win bracket. Where are my D2 Mighty Duck fans here for hole number six? Woo, woo, woo. Not Kenny Woo, but Brandon Woo. That's where we're going here, my friends. He's going to be the next guy that I'm going to be betting to win. We're getting 60 to one. That's the best number that I have found for everybody there. You can use Odd Shopper. Find yourself that best number. Looking over at the DK odds, another guy that's 50 to 1 probably don't want to be firing it up there there is a better number that exists on FanDuel here at the moment but this has long been an emerging player that I've just wanted to have exposure to on the betting card because I feel I feel like his time is coming second at the AT&T Pebble Beach really shined tee to green in that one lost around the green again this is just a player who finds opportunities to top 10 put himself into contention when you don't understand it but a 14th at the Honda looked great but that 19th of the players looked even better where he gained seven, yes, seven strokes with the putter. Is that unsustainable? Of course that's unsustainable. It's Brandon Wu and he's been negative with the putter in five of his last six before that. But that one where he was positive was that second at the AT&T Pebble Beach. And this field looks oddly similar to that where you do get some quality, quality top tier players with the Justin Thomases and the Jordan Speeds. The Sam Burns is, if you will. We'll talk about him in a second. But Brandon Wu, as it stands right now, I just think is a class above where this number is. And when you start evaluating golfers, we're looking for value. He's my last value piece that I really feel solid about considering 60 to 1 on him. He's better than that in this field. So Brandon Wu, I'm gonna add him to the card. Only two holes to go. Yep, we're making the turn, my friends. We're going to hole number eight. Well, we're not at the turn because that would be 10 of them. You know what I mean. We're going to some shorter odds players, but Gary Woodland kind of smack dab in the middle of my favorite short odds player, my favorite long shots. He's kind of got this weird 40 to one number, uh, 41 to one number that exists everywhere here and talked about him also in that matchup market. I think he just profiles really well here on this golf course. You start playing these tougher spots, he can really hack it out of the rough if he ends up hitting it there, but also has that ability to just hit stinger two irons and live with it. Like he has just truly got that mentality, that grinders type mentality. Maybe you know, rock chalk Jayhawk. It's college basketball season. He's getting ready to rock. Former Washburn basketball player too. Not that anybody cares about these things, but Gary Woodland, I care about adding to my betting card because again, other than Thomas Speed, Burns, Fitzpatrick, Fleetwood, those top tier names, I mean, hell, I think Gary Woodland belongs there. Former U.S. Open winner can thrive in tougher conditions. I hope it plays difficult, and I feel as though that this is just another player different than that of a Cage Lee, different than that of a Brandon Wu, just a different type of player to have exposure to in the outright market. So, uh, yeah, Gary Woodland hasn't had the best form uh, of late, that's for sure, but a top 10 at Genesis with the ball striking intact is enough for me 
to back him in a much, much weaker field here at a much better number than a lot of his peers. So 41 to 1, give me Gary Woodland as my second favorite play in the outright market. But my favorite play in the outright market has to be my guy, Sam Burns. I know that he's got the shortest odds of everybody here, but there's 18 to 1 lingering around there, and this is pretty much as short of a number as what you'll ever see me bet in terms of golf. I should be betting Scotty Scheffler and John Rahm every week. That might be more fun. It has not been fun, that's for sure. And then Kirk Kitayama comes from the clouds at the Arnold Palmer. That was lovely. I, I kind of enjoyed to watch it, even though I'd made zero money and got obliterated on the golf tournament. But this one, Sam Burns has made me money the last two years. Yes, I've bet him the last two years at this golf tournament. You know what he's done? Rewarded me. Why not make it three? And I get it. Very difficult to repeat on the PGA Tour, let alone three-peat. But Michael Jordan did it. Sam Burns can do it. Not the Michael Jordan of golf. I did not mean that in any way, shape, or form. But Sam Burns, even though he had those two missed cuts at the Genesis and the Arnold Palmer, quietly a solid season with the T11 at the American Express, T6 at the extremely good field that was at the Waste Management Elevated Event, the first of the Elevated Events. Feel as though Sam Burns is somebody you kind of want to be invested in this week. I looked at the head-to-head -head market. Obviously, I'm taking him straight up against Speed. I might be taking him against JT because I'm a sick person. But Sam Burns has shown that he can really handle the test of this golf course in a myriad of different ways. Again, lost strokes off the tee last year. Lost strokes off the tee. Gained a ton of them the year before that in his win. So there are different paths to be able to play this golf course for the same guy. He obviously has some familiarity with it. Has now played the last two weeks down here in Florida. Skipped out on the Honda. Three straight weeks. I think just getting back on the Bermuda for him. Looking solid. Feeling pretty good about this bet, even at 18 to 1. Now, if it starts to shorten up inside of 15 to 1, we got to have a talk. We got to have a real stern talking to ourselves. But repeat on deck be pretty wild of course it'd be more fun to hit woodland woo or lee at longer odds but i think sam burns gonna be a linchpin of my card hole number nine to win and that does it for lindy's best nine bets let me know in the comment section below what you think of my plays if there's anybody you've got your eye on here for the valspar gonna be a fun week of golf gonna be a fun week here at odd chopper regardless of the ncw tournament that's for sure half unit on everything for me this week as I'm focusing a lot of attention everywhere in the NBA, in college basketball, everywhere else, just like you all are. So check out Bet365 while you're at it. That's available, again, in Colorado, New Jersey, Ohio, and Virginia. If you're in one of those four states, congratulations. You can take advantage of the video description box below. All righty, y'all. I'll be back next week. Until then, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the golf streets this weekend.